David Edward and Paul Nordman discuss Paul's book, Working in Us What is Pleasing to Him. Paul, how are you? All right, David. How are you? I'm doing good. Now, Paul, we, we were just talking, and you're in a place that I love called Ohio. Is that right? Yeah, it's Columbus, Ohio. It's, Columbus? it's become home for me. <laughs> That's nice. Now, you grew up there? I grew up in Sheboygan, Michigan, up by the Straits of Mackinac. Came down here to go to school, and I stayed. And you stayed, you just loved it. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. And you're in, it uh, looks like a, a very professional office. <laughs> well, actually, I'm in the basement of our church. Okay. And I've had some, some uh, tech gurus uh, kind of help me with that. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a digital Luddite, and so I need some <laughs> help here. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about your book, uh, Working in Us, What is Pleasing to Him, which is your most recent book, but it's not your first book, right? No, no. My first book is called Christ in Me. And the second book then is uh, Working in Us, What is Pleasing to Him. And, and how much time was between the first book and the second book? No, well, the first book would have been, I think, September of 2016. And the second book would have been November of 2020. November, and, and so you really, a lot of strategy went into nailing that release date, I think, right? Because November 2020, yeah. that was that was November, like a really good, good time. Yeah, it really was not. And especially when <laughs> when a lot you make a lot of yourselves to, to small uh, Bible discussion groups who meet during the week. And nobody was really meeting during the week back in November 2020. So Right, right. That's but, interesting. But you know what? The people who have read it love it. And uh, have we've had a lot of wonderful conversations about it. Maybe we can get into that later. Well, yeah, no, absolutely. And I was looking, I always, I always look on Amazon and stuff and the book's doing good. And, and it's, it's gotten, it's one of the better reviews books I've ever seen for a book that's been out for, um, let's see, 2021, not quite two years, almost right. about a year and a half, I guess. Right. Um, I don't think anyone has had anything negative to say about it. Is that, that's right. yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. The worst review you have is a four-star review. Yeah. That's not bad. That's, not, that's enough to keep me honest. Keep me humble. Uh, you know what? You should read the worst reviews I have. They're, <laughs> they're much worse than a four-star yeah. review. So good for you. Yeah. So, so yeah. what is this book about and what inspired you to write it? Yeah, uh, the book is about, the, about transformation, spiritual transformation. So the Bible teaches us that, that God is at work in believers to make us progressively, steadily more and more like Christ, which is to say maybe a little less haughty, a little more humble, a little less fearful, a little more trusting, a little more, a little less selfish, a little bit more loving. And the Bible uses phrases like we're being uh, uh, transformed to the image of, of Christ. Or we're being uh, conformed into his likeness. And it's a process. It's a process. But what does that process look like? And what can we expect? And that's what this book is about. It's, it's kind of digging down and, and, uh, and learning, un understanding more deeply this, this miracle of transformation, God's work in us for the good. That's what it's about. Now, now, how long, how, how did you come up with the idea? How did you decide this book was needed or necessary? I guess it's the first question. And then walk me through kind of the beginnings of, of, ta of taking that idea. And, and when you finally realized, you know what, this is probably what my second book's going to be about. Yeah, I see a lot of believers trying hard to change their hearts, and, and and why not? But they're trying to do so in their 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 own power, and so kind of like try a little harder, do a little better, and and we're all kind of taught that, right? And and honestly, David, I think I think we can change our behaviors for a time or to a degree, uh, but then look at your New Year's resolutions. Maybe tells you it doesn't work, always work so well. So we can change maybe our behaviors, but but it's God who changes the heart. And so then Christian life then is uh, allowing God to do the, to work the good in it, us that he promises and follow his lead. And, and David, what that does, and this is, gets back to what inspired you to write the book, it frees us up. We don't have to be so self-absorbed because we know the God of the universe loves us. He's at work in us for the good. And so we can kind of lift our eyes up from our from spiritual navel gazing, and we can look outwards and and uh, see the needs in the world and go minister those needs in the love and in, in, in the, uh, the name of Christ. And and I don't want to jump off topic, but you actually do you, are you part of a group that ministers in a in, in a prison setting? Is that right? I do. I, I'm uh, actually up in we have a prison about a, about an hour away, and I'm there every Wednesday night. Okay. And, uh, and so in that particular prison, uh, David. Uh, they have an, an arrangement with a uh, with a seminary, and so some of these students can pursue a, a theological degree, and uh, and so they have read my books and and love them. And so what's fun is to go up on Wednesday night and they say, "Hey, I read this, and let's talk about that." It's just, it's just fun. That, well, that yeah. Is, now is that was that one of the reasons why you wrote this book? Is is um I don't want to say a tool. That's not I don't I, that's the word that popped in my head. But it's an instrument um, to facilitate conversations like that for groups like that. 
It is exactly right. Because again, our transformation is going to look a little different for each one of us. And the way I go about it, David, is, is I take to 12 bi historic biblical persons and we look at their storyline and we're going to learn something a little different about transformation through each one of them. That's the way I go about it. Mine's not a didactic style. It's highly relational, highly experiential. Yeah, one well, and the reviews reflect that. People say they really are able to kind of fall into the book and yeah. um and, and get something from it. So I and I'm just and I apologize. I'm just mostly curious about the process. So what what's been one of the best things that's happened when when you know, in the in the prisons or you know with with um uh, people who are in that situation as you as they go through a book like this or they work with you? Um, I mean, what's some of the real success stories that you've had? I talked to one inmate just a few weeks ago, and he said, you know, I, I read your book. And I read, read parts of it, and he was I promised myself I wasn't going to cry. I got so mad because I was crying, and I went over and kicked the wall. Because <laughs> prison is a place where you don't want to shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that might not be the there's right a, move. Yeah. <laughs> and there's another man who, uh, his wife, actually, he, ha he used my book, and his wife went out and bought it on the outside. And so when they're talking, they're having their weekly conversation, they actually used my book. Wow. They're in their conversation. And, you know, and I, those are things, David, that when you write a book, you, you have no idea how who's going to reach and how it's going to affect people. And I love that. I absolutely love that. I, I, I think, I mean, I think it's, I think it's great. I can't imagine something too much more rewarding than that, honestly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, so good for you. I mean, honestly, thank you for, for, for doing that work. Um, sure. So let's get into the process of writing this then. I mean, what, what, what did, did you outline the book first? Did you just have the idea in your head? Did you have to do a lot of research on it? You know, what, what, what was the actual process of writing it like? Yeah, I, I did get the idea in my head just by watching people, again, struggle in their own power to try and to change their hearts. They get so frustrated. And I think you don't need to be frustrated. God's got this. You're free. Um, but um, uh, I forget the second part of your question. Well, just walk me through the details, the, the logistics, you know, of actually the writing process. You know, you went from, okay, sure. I always say there was the day before you were writing this book and then there was a day after. So walk me through from the day after to the day you finished. Yeah. One thing I learned from my first book was the, the art of, and the discipline of the introduction. And I learned it the hard way in my first book, so I applied it in my second book. And so what I did, David, is I create this, this introduction, um, kind of, well, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. These are the points I think you need to make. This is how I'm going to go about it. And so this introduction in the second book, I let it guide my writing. And, but I would kind of talk back to the introduction. So what I mean by that is, as I'm writing, I'm thinking, okay, does this affect the introduction? And if so, how? Do I need to add anything? Do I need to change anything? Do I need to, to, to kind of build bridges? And so the introduction is informing my writing, and my writing is, is informing my introduction. So by the time I get done with my first draft, I'm already in edit mode for the introduction, which, in my opinion, is the hardest thing. To write a good introduction is the hardest thing about writing a book. You know, it, it's funny you say that. I, I talk to so many people and I always find things that I went through. And if I'm good at anything, and based on my reviews, I'm not good at very much when it comes to writing, but I'm good at that at, at the beginning, the introduction, right? The dropping into setting the expectations for um, and, and that kind of stuff. So I, I think the fact that you identify that is the hardest part. And I, I like the way you said it because I kind of do the same thing, which is you get it out there but you let it live. It, it lives the most of any part of the book, probably from an editing standpoint. It really standpoint. does. Yeah, it really does. That, that's interesting. So yeah. the book's been out for, I was trying to do the math in my head, like a year and a half, November, 2020. Yeah. So we're, yeah. About a year and a half. About a year and a half, just a little bit more. Um, is there anything that surprised you about the second book coming out that was different than when the first book came out? Um, I, I think I'll kind of go back and, and revisit something we, we talked about before. And that is, I, I love seeing where it ends up. So for, so for instance, um, there is a, a Christian book club in Lagos, Nigeria, and they chose my book for about a, th a, a three month period. And as a matter of fact, the leader of the group contacted me and said, would you be willing to zoom in to our Bible discussion or our, our book discussion with your book? And I said, sure, I'd be happy to do that. So one day I zoom into this, this book discussion on my book over in Lagos, Nigeria, awesome. and it was fabulous. It was absolutely fabulous. They had questions for me. They had comments for me, and it was, they're just wonderfully engaging. And so, again, you know, David, I, I think you talk about the, the impact of the book or what surprises me. Um, it, what always surprises me is where it ends up. Yeah. That's, and, that, that, this, this book's got legs. 
you know, I, I hope so. I, like I say, had I really said any other times, I think I had more legs, <laughs> but, but uh, we're taking another go at it. Right wow. Now. But a book like this is also timeless, right? You're not writing some that's political right. no, exactly right. analysis of, yeah, that's you know, right. the 2016 that's election, right. whatever. Right. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's good. All right. So, so what, what would advice might you have for someone who, um, uh felt like they had a book in them too maybe maybe an inspirational book like this maybe not maybe just they, they've had some life experiences sure. they think sure. uh, are worth writing down or you know what, what advice would you have for someone who's starting this process yeah for for an aspiring writer um i i published through zulon press which is uh, part of salem media and one of their executives once wrote and i probably won't get this exactly but not my far off uh, he said i believe everybody has at least one book in them and, and I would agree with that. I think it's true. I think everybody has a story. Everybody has an experience. Everybody has a viewpoint. Everybody has an idea. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not urging to go out and write something per se, but I would affirm that everybody has a book in them, at least one. I think so. Um, yeah. If you were to ask me 10 years ago, name five things you couldn't do, write a book would have been one of them. Uh, but it was there. Uh, two of them were there. <laughs> yeah, two of them. Yeah. 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 And, so, and then I would say to, uh, to, ex to people who have already written, I would say this, don't write in a vacuum. Uh, find people who are good readers, who understand what makes a good book and understand the continuity and, and, and so forth and, and share your, your stuff with them while you're in process. Because, you know, honestly, David, I think my books are very well written, but you know what? They're so much better because of three, four, five people who give me really good input. They're good readers and they're honest with me. And so I, I think they've made my books much better than it would have been otherwise. You know, Paul, that, that's not only my last question, but I want to I want to follow up because I, I think this, that's an interesting point. So when you do that during the writing process and you're getting that feedback, how do you keep the, your shields down so you're willing to accept the feedback? And how do you know? Um, how do you balance feedback that is there? Are, it's all good feedback, but feedback that you're going to use, and maybe feedback that you're not going to use. How do you how do you sort through that? Yeah, I love feedback. Um, I thrive on it. And, and I'm able to evaluate it in such a way that if I don't agree with it, um, that's fine. I respect their opinion. Um, I don't, but, but then I also have just wonderful ideas coming. So I'm, I'm able to handle criticism, I think, pretty objectively. I, it doesn't bother me. I kind of like it. Um, and, and so then the second part of your question, I'm, I'm very able to, in return, to say, hey, you know what? That was a really good point you made. I think I'm going to go this way instead, and here's why. Yeah. So I, I just don't personally don't have a hard time with that. That's good. I, I think I, I think that that is one of the most important pieces because I think the advice to get feedback is more than just important. It, it's it, essential to the process. But you don't always have to take all the feedback you get because I, right. I see writers destroy themselves right. because they get and then they ruin their story because you still it has to be your brand if that's the right word or you know your your style it has to be you on the page and you just use the feedback to make sure that you're doing it in a way that other people can pick up on it versus changing completely what you do. Right. Um, so I think that's I think that's and good for you for for, for you should you should uh, I'll send you some of the feedback I get from my books that that'll that'll <laughs> it'll break you you won't be quite so open to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> won't be so sanguine about it exactly all right sir paul thank you very nice talking to you and uh, i hope the book does uh, continues to do well and it continues to go far and when you get your next book out let me know and we'll talk about it thanks david this was fun i appreciate it thanks paul bye thank you for watching please consider hitting the subscribe button